Welcome everyone to Midday Magazine for this January 26, 2024. Have your host James J. Mayloff here. At 3.30, we're going to talk with our friends from Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools. We have Craig Roran joining us, superintendent over there, along with Tina Walner, principal of Grove Elementary. Looking forward to that. Right now, looking real forward to talking to our friend Peggy Kurth. Peggy is the volunteer coordinator over at the Aging and Disability Resource Center of Central Wisconsin. Peggy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Uh, uh, Peggy, I uh, always appreciate the time and love talking with our friends from the ADRC. Appreciate all the work that you all do over there. Um, I'm oh, curi- thank you. I'm curious, as a volunteer coordinator, uh, we're going to get into uh, not only opportunities for people to volunteer, but some of the things that you guys do over there. But is Sure. Uh, um, with a job like this, Peggy, I, I, I think that a lot of us um, – necessarily don't necessarily understand everything that goes into it uh so i'm just curious i just had a couple of really quick questions for you about uh volunteering in general um when it comes to over at the adrc there's a number of great volunteer opportunities is this something that you're always looking at for more uh like avenues for people to volunteer other ways for people to volunteer um well, we, we do hope to add some other opportunities kind of down the line, mm-hmm. but um, right now the ones that we have available are, are kind of where we're at. Yeah. But um, if some, I mean, but we're willing to be flexible too, and if someone has a great idea, we'd love to you know, hear from them. And uh, Peggy, you, you, you hit it right out the uh, park for me, because that's exactly what I wanted to hit on here. When we're talking about these volunteer opportunities, with everything we're talking about, really with the ADRC, keep in mind that they lo- they will work with you, that they like to work with people. They will work with their community. Um, I, I think that when I've talked to people about Meals on Wheels and, and some other things in the past, that is usually one of the first things that comes up. Oh, I, I've got such a busy schedule. Or oh, I, I've, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so pulled this way and pulled that way. I, I don't know how I'd ever be able to help. And sure enough, the, you know, the ADRC oftentimes can work with people on those things. So I want to already get that out there right away, and we'll touch on it a little bit more as we go along. So I appreciate you, Peggy. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Thanks. Let's start out talking a little uh, of some of the things that you do over there, like uh, the senior dining. Uh, let, let's start right there. Okay. Yeah, so Senior Dying is one program that we have, which is very popular. Um, In Wisconsin Rapids, we have a Senior Dining site set up at Centralia Center. And uh, it's an opportunity for adults that are 60 and older to come and have a hot, healthy meal um, at a very reasonable cost and also be able to socialize with other people, mm. which is really important for all of us. Yeah. Um, in, at the Wisconsin Rapids site, they do also have um, different activities that happen throughout the month, kind of uh, in collaboration with, with the meal. Mm. So it's, it's not always just coming and having a meal, but... Um, There's a few times coming up in February where you can also play bingo. Um, Jane Orcutt, our uh, senior dining site manager, really does a great job at at doing different activities or (laughs) holidays are coming up of of making it very festive. Uh, I see that you have on here um, frequent dining prizes the last day of the month, which is fun. Uh, and Funny Friday, share your funny jokes or stories. Gosh, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a wonderful idea. Yes, especially this time of the year where with the kind of weather we've had, which is very gloomy <clears throat> or, um, or you know, the Arctic blast that we mm-hmm. had last week. It's, it's nice to be able to get out, um, come to a place that's a warm location also, and and uh, talk about things that are funny, because I think we need that this time of the year well, in particular. And and not for nothing, uh, it, it's just me speaking here for my money, uh, some of the funniest people I've ever met are seniors. Uh, that For one, <laughs> they've been around longer, they've heard more jokes, they've got more uh, material to work with. But uh, they, they, they do, often, they do. Oftentimes their perspective uh, is, is, is also just as funny or uh, the way that they deliver a joke. You can hear a joke delivered by other people, but a senior delivers it and it's just funnier. It's just something to it and everything. <laughs> um, you mentioned the bingo. 
I see uh, February 5th, there'll be bingo at 11, and February 19th, they'll have bingo at 11. So that, uh, as you touched on, that's yeah. going to be fun, too. That's <clears throat> nice at it. We love yeah. bingo around here. Yeah, well, how you know, what's not to love about bingo? <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. And uh, for those who don't know, this February has is a leap year. Uh, so we have a leap day special yeah. drawing going on. We do. We do. So kind of, you know, we don't always have February 29th every year, so mm-hmm. it's it's an opportunity to, again, celebrate and um, just have fun yeah. with, with the day-to-day um, things that are happening. Peggy, you brought up a couple of really important points about the senior dining as well. Um, certainly, there is a nutritional value. I I forget to eat all the time. I'm horrible at this. Uh, and I'm in my mm-hmm. 40s, and I've done this my whole life. Um, it's something that uh, as you get older, uh, it can be a, a more of a detriment, though, uh, and, and to not only forget about eating but to just not have an appetite sometimes. So dining right. with others can sort of can improve that, can help with that. It can. You know, um, I um, live alone, so I understand the difficulty in – um, going home and being motivated to make a, a full meal for myself, it just doesn't always seem worth it. Um, so it is really important um, for people to get out and talk with other people and have that meal. It can really create a sense of community, which, again, if you're living on your own, um, is really important. And again, I think especially in the winter time where we tend to be a little more isolated from people. Mm-hmm. And that part is uh, where I'm going to piggyback off of next because the, the socialization of this, um, I don't, I don't get out enough. I don't do enough. I don't talk to enough people. And again, I'm pretty social mm-hmm. and I work in a very social job and everything. And I don't do enough of those things. When you uh, get into retirement, when you get up there, when maybe family members move or aren't around, it, it, those numbers start to dwindle even more. The opportunities to socialize start to dwindle even more. So getting out there and and doing that, like, I don't think we, uh, in fact, I know, I feel very confident about this. We don't give ourselves enough wins, like the the little victories in life. And if you're a senior and you get yourself, you maybe you don't feel like it, but you get yourself up, you go to the senior dining, that's a win. You you made the attempt. You got up, you got and tried and did it. Um, just doing mm-hmm. those kind of things are a victory and a win, let alone going to the dining and having a good time, having good conversations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I definitely know what it's like sometimes to – feel like you don't want to you know get up get dressed yeah um, yeah we all have your those nice days. cozy house and go somewhere but it really can make a big difference mm-hmm. in your mood um your perspective um it might be something we have um a lot of our volunteers also have a meal there so um not saying that everyone who comes and has a meal decides to volunteer but it might be something that once you're around people and you're talking and having fun that you decide, oh, it might be kind of nice to come earlier and help, you know, help um, package meals mm-hmm. for Meals on Wheels or help get the dining site ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's a great point. And another opportunity for you to maybe, if you are looking to volunteer, checking this out and kind of getting your, your feet in the water a little bit and uh, seeing how things go over at the ADRC. Um, well, yeah. We're, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Peg. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with okay. you. <laughs> um, uh, Peggy, one of the things that we do when we talk with our ADRC is certainly talk about the, the things that you guys do over there and really focus on uh, our, our rapids, location, and such. But there is uh, the Nakusa, Nakusa Community Center as well we want to reference. Yes, and um, this uh, the Nakusa Community Center, we um, just recently, like less than a year ago, maybe six months um, reopen that site. It had been closed since COVID. Mm. Um, we had tried to reopen um, a few years ago, but had difficulty finding mm-hmm. um, staff to to um, actually run the the dining site. Yeah. But um, we're very happy that now we're now we have the site open. They serve lunch on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon, um, and Again, that one, um, that site will also have different fun activities on those days. Um, the 
the kitchen manager is is newer, so we're kind of um, she's you know getting her feet and getting to know the community and um, all that's part of that role. Mm-hmm. But we're really excited to be able to have that in Nakusa again. So excited. Um, uh, first off, a big congratulations to everybody that made this happen and to the community of Nakusa uh, for this back opening. Uh, I don't know how much we've gotten to talk since it's opened up again. Um, so I, I'm really glad to be able to note it and talk about it. And again, a big shout out to everybody. Uh, congratulations on that. That takes a lot of work behind the scenes to make things like that happen. Um, Brittany, uh, uh, Peggy, I, I don't mean to go off in a, a side road here, but you did okay. mention uh, that the holdup in having the facility open and needing people. Um, I, we're always we have younger people out there listening all the time, and we're always uh, trying to help people get into industries or let people know about different industries that could use good people in them. Um, this is certainly one of them. So I just wanted to note that if you're out there, you're on the fence about where to go with your career. Um, working in this industry is one of the most rewarding industries you can find. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I didn't list this on, on our notes, but since you mentioned that, I did want to just put a plug in. We do have an open position for mm-hmm. our support staff in Wisconsin Rapids. It'll be a part-time position, um, 28 hours a week, um, helping like at the, the front desk and um, that positions involved a lot with the nutrition program as far as taking reservations and getting meal counts in. So if anyone's interested, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if it's on the Marathon County website yet, but mm. They could always give our office a call if they're looking for more information. Yeah, I'm on uh, adrc-cw.org right now, and I don't see it right now, but I do see links okay. and ways to find out more about that and other opportunities like we've talked about. So uh, be sure to check out the webpage, adrc-cw.org. And before we wrap up, we'll get Peggy's information to you out there so I can, you can contact her as well. Um, Peggy, sure. as, as far as the Nakusa Community Center, that's located at 416 Crestview Lane in beautiful Nakusa, serving Monday through and Wednesday at noon. Who is uh, eligible to uh, take in this dining? Um, again, it would be um, anyone who's 60 and older, mm-hmm. uh, their spouse and, or partner, if um, even if they're under 60, and um, a Adults with disabilities, if they're living with uh, someone who would be eligible and would be attending, they're also eligible to to come to the site and get a meal. Is uh, do you, is it do you need to make a reservation for this? Yes. So we do um, call our reservations into the caterer the day before. So if you wanted to attend, let's say on Monday, you would need to call today by noon. So that we can add that to our count and make sure we have um, enough food for everyone. Excellent. <clears throat> and uh, what's the number that they can call to be able to do that? Uh, they can call our 800 number. It's 888-486-9545. Excellent. We'll get that number out there again before we wrap up. Uh, And uh, let's go ahead and take some time now to talk a little bit about volunteer opportunities. We've mentioned some things about these a little bit, and we've certainly talked about this in the past. But we're always uh, we're always uh, wanting to reach new people, and we always have new listeners out there. So let's go ahead and dive into Meals on Wheels first. And we're looking for Meals on Wheels drivers. What is Meals on Wheels for those that don't know, and what would a driver do? So <clears throat> Meals on Wheels is um, for people, again, who are 60 and older, um, but are considered more homebound. So that could be um, maybe they've lost their transportation and, and don't have the ability to get out to a grocery store, or they're recovering from a surgery and they're not as able physically to make a meal for themselves. Or it could be at they're at a point in their life where um, either it's just difficult physically or um, mentally, emotionally to to prepare a meal. Um, they're eligible to have a meal delivered um, directly to them at their house. Um, we do that over the lunch hour again and heavily rely on having volunteers actually deliver those meals. 
<clears throat> when uh, would the routes be uh, taking place? Uh, what time of the day or what days of the week? Sure. <clears throat> so um, we deliver Meals on Wheels Monday through Fridays. And uh, the approximate time that uh, volunteers come in to pick up their um, their meals is like around 1030, 1045. And depending on the route, it could take an hour or um, up to an hour and a half. Hmm. But that being said, if somebody um, has a really limited time frame, we can, um, Jane is very willing to work with people and maybe try and lighten up a route that would get done in a shorter amount of time. Yeah, um, I know this for a fact. Um, the uh, ADRC will work with you and your schedule. I uh, when I did this out in California, I had the weirdest, craziest schedule. I was I was acting in a TV show, and I'm all over the place and all over the state. <laughs> and they, uh-huh. I, I went in there, and and honestly, uh, being very genuine about this, I went in thinking, okay, I'm they're probably not going to be able to use me for this. Maybe I can volunteer for something else. And I, I just figured that I'd volunteer for something else, something simple. And then when I told them my schedule, they didn't blink an eye. Okay, well, this house right here, and actually there's a house right next to it. If you were willing to, you could also drop off to. So I only had two people on my route, but it was um, it's still to this day one of the greatest volunteering experiences and one of the greatest things I have done with my free time. Um, I, 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 That's I re- nice to hear. I remember <clears throat> the, the gentleman uh, and the lady that I dropped off meals to vividly. Um, and, and I appreciated my time with them so very much. And I appreciated the ADRC giving me that opportunity, giving me a chance to be able to do something like that, to be able to put back into my community that way. So, yeah, I, I can't speak high, higher enough about this, not only doing it, but uh, finding the opportunity, finding the time to do it. Not only does it benefit, obviously, the clientele and the people getting these meals, but you are going to feel so good from it. The volunteering benefits for you yourself are just as impactful as what you do for others. Yes, exactly. I couldn't say it any better than that. <laughs> um, well, uh, I was just reading the cue card, just the way you wrote it up, Peggy. Just the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing to keep in mind is adopting a route. Yeah, so this is um, a pretty uh, a fun concept. Um, uh, adopt a route would be where a group of people decide to commit to having someone deliver, maybe it's once a week on Tuesdays, and they would just rotate people through their group. So each person might only end up uh, delivering meals one time a month or a couple of times a month. Mm -hmm. And it works out really nice. Uh, It helps us out a lot because then we know that route is covered no matter what. Um, And it also is kind of a benefit to that group because, again, it's not a um, for people who have a tighter schedule, it's not necessarily a weekly commitment for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and like uh, ODC adopted a route, so they're uh, delivering Meals on Wheels in the Wisconsin Rapids area. And that was one group that we did uh, find a, a route that was going to fit time, time-wise for mm-hmm. them. Uh, it nothing makes my heart sing like hearing two nonprofits working together. It it, it makes our community yeah, so much stronger. Been, That's cool. It's been it's been great. We have let's see, ODC and Wisconsin Rapids and Marshfield are delivering Merrill, and then um, up in Tomahawk, it's it's a different uh, name of a group, but mm-hmm. a similar. Um, situation. And uh, something that they get at uh, the ADRC and the ODC and really uh, all of our nonprofits, this is a way of nourishing your community. It's a way of nourishing your community and also um, getting to know people, you know, that you might not necessarily meet and kind of having that intergenerational learning that you get from having different groups of people coming together. Mm -hmm. It's really beneficial for for all parties. And this uh, really is a leader peer uh, opportunity as well. Yes. Yep. Um, It's, like I said, it's a real flexible um, way to volunteer and um, Mm -hmm. get those good feelings you get when you're doing something for someone else and yeah. you're not getting paid to do it necessarily, mm-hmm. but um, you're doing it because you want to do it. 
Peggy, we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I, I wanted to just briefly touch on some of the programming uh, that's available with the ODC as well. Oh, with the ADRC? With the ADRC. Did I say ODC? I'm sorry. I got all my did, initials mixed no, up. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to know this. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, I'm really putting you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, but there are some great programs available available with our ADRC. Yeah, yeah. So we have um, some programs that are run on a regular basis, and they're coming up in Wisconsin Rapids. We have a Dementia Basics program. Um, it runs for an hour on February 20th from 3 to 4 p.m. And it just, um, it's a nice kind of overview of um, learning what dementia is and the different types and how you, you know, like what's normal aging and what might be dementia. Mm. Um, we also have one called Brain Health Basics, which is really more um, learning about different options and choices that you can make in life to kind of um, promote a healthy brain. Mm. Uh, that one will be on February 27th mm. um, from 3 until 4 p.m. We also have a, a program called Managing Caregiver Stress. Mm. So this is a, a workshop for adults that are like, providing care for like a family member or a friend. Um, and it's really about how they can take care of themselves during that process. Mm. That one will be held on March 13th from 2 to 3 p.m. Mm. And then we have our fall prevention program called Stepping On. Um, <clears throat> this program meets more than one time. that one time. It's a seven-week workshop, and it's going to run on Fridays, April 5th through May 17th from 9.30 to 11.30 at the YMCA in mm -hmm. Wisconsin Rapids and really focuses on um, all the different um, ways or things that can contribute to uh, an older adult falling or anyone falling mm -hmm. um, and how you can learn about ways to avoid that happening. All really important programs that uh, we appreciate you guys having, and we encourage you to find out more about. We're also going to talk uh, more about Advocacy Days uh, next time we talk to our ADRC and as we get closer to uh, Alzheimer's Association Advocacy Day, which is February 20th, and Disability Advocacy Day, March 20th. As we get closer to those, we are going to spread attention and make attention, bring attention to those and bring attention to our ADRCW. Okay. Uh, Peggy, if people have follow-up questions, want to know more about some of what we talked about today, how can they reach you? Um, they can call our 800 number again. It's 888-486-9545. And um, they can explain to our support staff um, what they have a question on. And if it's related to volunteering, then they'll get transferred to me. Otherwise, it would go to the appropriate staff person. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind the uh, website, adrc-cw.org. Be sure to follow the ADRC on social media as well. It's a great way to keep up on, the, on all the things that they are doing. Peggy, we love talking with you. Thank you so much for the time. Say <laughs> hi to the staff over there. You have yourself a great weekend. You too. Thank you so much. And we'll be back with more Midday Magazine coming up right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.